Cow disguise kit. <laughs> Clever costume is perfect for cows that need to go undercover. Shenanigans, back again, and welcome to MMOMG. I've finished my final week in Project Gorgon, logging about 80 total hours into the game. As this is my wrap-up episode, I'll be focusing more on my general thoughts of the title and mention some of the content I didn't get to within my month's stay in Project Gorgon. I would like to briefly recap my final week, though, so here's what happened. Uh, some friends took me on a tour of Sunvale. The zone is actually very beautiful. It has a tropical beach and scattered ancient ruins. It is fairly dangerous for lower-level players, though. Trolls ran along, numerous beasts dot the landscape, and meanwhile, two factions of fairies battle each other at Sunvale. You can befriend the Summer Court fairies, and Sunvale is also home to a group of druids who will teach you their ways if you swear to uphold their vows. Later that week, a high-level player escorted me to the Werewolf Den in the Kerr Mountains, where I obtained what might be one of the most entertaining curses so far. It switches around your typed chat text so that you end up talking almost like Yoda. There's uh, currently a semi-hidden word game accessible in the lower right corner of the UI. Uh, competing in this awards you with vocabulary XP, which has no use right now, but is rumored to work with bardic skills once they are introduced. You can also earn special behavior badges by accomplishing certain feats or restricting yourself in some way, uh, earning you such titles as shirtless, vegetarian, or pacifist, amongst others. These badges typically don't have very many in-game perks, but they certainly give you a lot of bragging rights. There are over 20 known badges and possibly more left to be discovered or even added later. Uh, speaking of undiscovered content, I'd like to go ahead and mention some of the things I didn't get to touch upon during my month in Project Gorgon. So, first of all, guilds. They are pretty much what you would expect for an MMO. They currently provide members with extra storage, additional guild quests that are completed by the whole group, and even a guild currency that you can use to obtain items or recipes. As far as zones and dungeons, the Ilmari Desert is for players level 50 plus, and there's the Rakshasa city of Rehu, divided into a peaceful south region and a dangerous north region. There are over half a dozen dungeons I didn't even step foot in, ready to challenge adventurers from levels 35 all the way to 60. As far as skills, there's a whole slew of those. I'll go over the combat skills. Battle chemistry focuses on AoE effects, allows you to create golems, Hammer uh, is a melee crushing attacks with high burst damage, and you can have access to electricity damage later. Ice magic has a lot of AoE and crowd control effects using ice and weather, such as lightning. Knife fighting is a combination of damage over time, dots, evasion, and some self-healing using, of course, melee attacks, poisons, things like that. Necromancy allows you to summon undead servants and steal the life from foes. Shield skills can give you a lot of extra defense and provide a variety of shield-based attacks, stuns, and things of that nature. Then there's even staff fighting, kind of a martial staff, not, not magic, which provides a mix of defense, taunts, and crowd control effects. As for non-combat and trade skills, there's well over two dozen I didn't even acquire. Art history, augmentation, gadgeteering, shamanic infusion, transmutation industry, phrenology, reading bumps on someone's head, sigil scripting, treasure cartography, just to name a few. Uh, what this means is there's a variety of ways to play Project Gorgon, and that makes it one of its greatest strengths. The diversity of the skills and items required for crafting it reinforces the need for trade with the player community. For example, some armor creation recipes require heads of cabbage. You may be asking why. Uh, it's because they're used as a template to help fit the head or legs of the wearer, which was an actual real-life practice long, long ago. That's something I didn't even know about until playing this game, which I think is very cool, a little in-depth nugget of information. So this brings me into my summary section of the video where I'd like to discuss pros and cons of Project Gorgon in its current state. And so first, my compliments, and I've already just touched on this, is that Project Gorgon has a lot of intricacies that make it very enjoyable and probably one of the most enjoyable sandbox MMOs I've seen from a small team. Uh, in quite some time. I have played several small sandbox MMOs uh, in the recent years, 
and even in its alpha state, has quite a lot of polish and little twists and creativity that is very surprising for such a small dev team. Overall, the game feels a lot less grindy compared to a lot of other sandbox MMOs, and I think that's due to the volume of skills that are available. It just seems like there's something always leveling up, so it gives you this regular sense of progression, which is actually very nice. There's no actual need for rolling alts, except maybe for roleplay purposes, as you can technically learn every skill on the same character if you really wanted to. Uh, And that's actually very cool. Additionally, there's almost no vendor trash. It seems that almost all items have some kind of a purpose, even if they're only given away to NPCs to increase their favor. Of course, that makes for a double-edged sword, which I guess I'll use to segue into some of my complaints about the game. First off, I guess, is inventory. It feels like there's never enough inventory space, and that's partially in part due to all items having some kind of use, and you just have a problem figuring out what can you get rid of. In addition, the items currently equipped to your character also take up inventory slots in your bags. However, there's a paper doll tab that also shows your equipped gear, so I'm I'm a little confused as to why they have to take up those extra, what, nine or ten or so slots. I kind of wish that they would actually free that up. On a related note, I kind of have mixed feelings about storage in the game. There's a number of NPCs and even some hidden stashes out in the world and in dungeons that you can store items with, but that storage is then only accessible from that same location. Now, it's far more realistic than the shared bank system you see in a lot of MMOs, but it is a little more frustrating and it takes some getting used to. Not a huge complaint, just an adjustment. I have one burning question, though, concerning... Project Gorgon, which is, why hasn't anyone invented a fishing pole? When you catch fish, you actually dive into the water. It makes me wonder, like, there's this variety of civilized skills already in the game, so to me it doesn't make a lot of sense that people are still catching fish with their bare hands. Now, granted, it is something at least different from the overused, you know, drop line in water, click when the fish is hooked trope that you see everyone else use, so I give them credit for that. While I prefer as few load screens as possible in MMOs, I really enjoy the open world aspects. The zones here in Project Gorgon are fairly large. I will accept that load screens between zones are pro- it's probably a necessary evil, but the invisible walls that you run into are kind of aggravating. I'm not really certain, though, how to address this properly. I mean, I suppose you could ring every zone with some kind of unscalable barrier, but that's also very unrealistic as well. So I hope they can figure something out that makes things feel a little more appropriate. Uh, In its current state, also, the quest log is kind of a hot mess. I see no clear determination on how quests are sorted, and they tend to change their order over time, so it makes it difficult to locate any one quest in particular. I really wish there would be some kind of a sorting function, either difficulty level, zone, really anything right now would be an improvement. Uh, Hopefully that will get addressed with some of their planned updates, which include the following. So, coming soon, at some point in the future, there will be a UI overhaul, which I'm sure will address a lot of different issues. Fairy and orcs will become playable races, uh, and it's said that fairies will inherently know knife fighting from character creation, which sounds kind of cool. Mounts and writing skills will be available at some point. Uh, This is often a very requested feature in MMOs. However, I do feel this will require the zones to be significantly larger as a result. So I don't know how they're going to work all that out. Uh, In addition, there will be player-created quest content, which is a great idea. I can't wait to see how they implement that. And, of course, instance player housing and guild halls. And you can even get a sneak peek of the outside of a prototype house over in Eltabule. So to wrap up, my month in Project Gorgon was a pleasant one and I'd be willing to check back in on this title down the road. Several of my friends also enjoyed the game immensely, and are thinking about supporting it through Indiegogo or Kickstarter. As for December, I'm moving on, and I'll be trying Riders of Icarus. That's an MMORPG that focuses on taming dragons. Sounds kind of cool. Uh, join me on the Hakane server that's North America, or drop into my live stream at twitch.tv slash shenanigans1930, evenings around 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, please remember to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series. Feel free to leave comments or suggestions below. Thank you so much for watching, and take care, guys.
where else can you be a werewolf and have a pet tiger? That's true. There you go. A you can be a werewolf, a werewolf who, who speaks cow, okay. speaks deer, and turn into a duck, have a pet tiger, have its pet tiger fight its pet rat, <laughs> and milk itself. Oh, we've got a goodie here. Oh, the spooky, spooky punch. Drink, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, what's the worst that Milton. can happen? Brains and decay, it's pretty much... You're, you're pretty sure this is... Yum, poisonous. yum, 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 yum. Yep. Let's do it. debuff you and enable PvP for five minutes. Woohoo! Sure is... With super jump. Yeah. Where you at? Do this. <laughs> Truffle. <laughs> kill by kill. Run away. Does that work on you? <laughs> Killed by cattle. Yes. I gotta switch to my fire staff. Ah, uh, temporary insanity. I believe I'm entirely invisible except to demons. Anyone who can see you must be a demon in disguise. There's a wolf on my head. <laughs> Go demon! No, demon! Get away from me, demon! Get away from me, demon! Go away, demons! Demons everywhere! We're not drowning. Yeah, I'm surprised that doesn't lower the metabolism. Technically, we're under the water. We're taking aerated underwater naps. Yep. We are literally sleeping and not dying with the fishes. Yep. Huh. Well, there's not really any fish in here. Why'd you have to go and ruin a perfectly nice thing? 